Hi, and thanks for joining. My name is Jackson, and today we're going to be taking a look at trading within Elite Dangerous. Uh, specifically, we're going to be taking a look at trading in rare commodities. The reason being is when you first start off in this game, you realize that the thousand credits they gave you is a very small drop in a very large bucket. So the idea is, how do I get a better ship? How do I get something more substantial without necessarily blowing up everything in the galaxy or spending hours sitting at nav points collecting bounties? So within the commodities markets, there are two different types of goods. There are the standard goods, which are basically like what you see here that are denoted by the, the by default the orange color. Then there are rare goods, which are denoted by a yellow color. Now there's all kinds of resources out there on the internet that will show you where to go, uh, what particular routes you may want to run, and in many cases folks will take a random stab at the profitability of those routes, but I've really found that information to be generally misleading. So as you can see, here we have six tons of Leastian Evil Juice sitting in our cargo hold, as well as Lavi and Brandy. We have a couple tons of Dissama Corn and some more of Azure Milk. I, in this case, with my particular ship, um, I'm flying a Diamondback Scout, and it basically has been set up to be able to make these runs of 120 or so light years uh, without much of an issue. Uh, because Elite Dangerous is a very look-centric game, I'm also using a Track IR, so let me go ahead and uncage that, get head tracking working. All right, there we are. So it's worth noting that when you start out, you won't have a ship that can go this far. Uh, space is an incredibly humongous place, and because of that reason, yeah, it can take a while to get around. I want to say that the starter ship can only travel about four light years of jump, give or take, and it's not terribly fuel efficient. So I'm not sure why I put my cargo scoop down, but now it's back up. We'll go ahead and make a safe and successful exit from the station here, barring hitting that guy. Now the reason that I mentioned 120 light years is because that's typically typically about the optimal range for wanting to go driving around with these uh, with these rare commodities. The reason being is because when you purchase them, the amount they sell for increases with the range that you go to sell them from where you bought them. So if we go over here, we take a look at our galaxy map. We're making a nice trip over here to this state to this system, uh, Z E E S S Z E or, or Z E S if you will. Now with this line that's plotted out that shows our exact route through the, through the galaxy, uh, you notice that line is entirely solid. One thing, it's one thing to, uh, to note the fact that it's solid is that means with the fuel in your ship given this route, you'll be able to make it from one end of this route to the other without much of an issue. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so one of the interesting things is when you plot a route like this uh, and you select your target, if you have it, the last if the last button you click is to select this particular system, it just simply tries and points you directly there, which you'll never make a 135 light year jump, you know, all by itself. The easiest way is just click plot route without exactly clicking without clicking select, in which case your next one, uh, your next area, or your excuse me, the next point that you're going to be jumping to, will be the first one in your route. <clears throat> That's something the game developers may take a look at in time, but really once you get used to it, you only mess up when you're trying to make videos for YouTube. So we'll get going here. Now it's worth noting, you know, as mentioned, the cargo hold in the stock ship is very, very small. I want to say it's two tons right off the bat, which isn't going to get you much. And your travel is very slow, so this will take you quite a while to get, to, to get done with. It'll take you forever to make the number of jumps necessary. You'll be stopping for fuel. You know, it'll just generally be a waste of time and space, in my opinion. Uh, the easiest way to get around this, ooh, star. The easiest way to get around this is just simply to go and run yourself some bounties until you can pick up a reasonably priced ship, uh, in my case, the Diamondback Explorer, or excuse me, Diamondback Scout, and then you can begin making longer trips throughout the galaxy. Uh, typically, typically, I believe it takes approximately one minute per jump of real time, uh, give or take, you know, as usual. You may spend more or less time in hyperspace, or witch space if you'd like to call it that. And uh, so your mileage may vary significantly. Now the reason that you want to trade these goods is because they offer a significant bang for the buck. What I mean by that is that their cost per, or excuse me, their profit per ton is far in excess of what you can get through more standard means of trading. And really, you know, seeing as I can't carry 200 tons of cargo around, and when you just start out, you won't be able to afford the ship to do it either. Uh, this makes for a reasonable way of trading. Now, most folks will just trend towards the combat, which we'll absolutely be taking a look at in another video in this series. 
but yeah, this is a reasonable way to get to get from point A to point B to learn a little bit about the galaxy, uh, the lay of the land, so to speak, and uh, to make yourself some credits while you're doing it. And this sheep each trip generally nets me around a quarter of a million credits, um, sometimes as high as three hundred thousand. Uh, it can vary a little here or there, as most things do. And that's perfectly good for my purposes. I can make about two of these trips an hour if I'm really hoofing it. You know, if I don't fall asleep in this this infinite wave of jumps, you know, playing space trucker throughout the cosmos. But um, any which way, it's still a good way to make credits. Now, what other folks have done is they use the power of a fuel scoop and these incredibly large and bright glowing balls of gas to suck up their own fuel. In my case, I found that that takes too much time, and uh, quite frankly, I don't really have the space for it on the ship. So, I just simply buy my fuel at the stations and plot my routes accordingly. I don't mind taking a longer route that may include a bunch of jumps. You know, in this case, I have 19 more jumps to go for about 20 minutes of flying around out here in space. Eh, it just never gets old. Um, anyhow, most folks, or some folks, will just scoop up things from the sun wanting to maximize their profit per hour, and that's great for them. Uh, in my case, I don't particularly find it very time, I don't know, time efficient. Now, some folks may, in fact, find it time efficient, but I'm willing to bet those folks are also hauling a lot more cargo than, you know, my little, my little bitty dinky eight tons. So, in order to spare you the indignity of the next 19 minutes of watching me jump from star to star to star, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here. We'll pick it up again when we get where we're going. Alright, so one thing that I wanted to point out, now we're not quite to our destination yet, we still have what? We still have 14 jumps to go. You know, one thing I wanted to point out is that when you do this trading in rare goods, you're inevitably going to run across a situation such as this one. So if I look down there at the little card that represents what I'm in, I'll notice that, you know, everything is more or less unexplored here. Which gives us a pretty, a pretty interesting opportunity. So we have the ability to target the sun, and then to, to perform a scan of the sun just by holding our nose on it. Now it's best to do this while stopped because you really don't want to charge into that hot ball of nasty out there. That thing will burn you up in a second. But anyhow, it's worth just grabbing cartographic data. Okay, cool. So we found Bunnis A, and it's a red dwarf. Now one of the other things is that is that most all of these ships that you get will have a discovery scanner. Your starter ship does, and I generally tend to put them on when I can. So we'll go ahead and fire that up. We'll see if there are another, any other celestial bodies that are out there. All right, so no new astronomical objects discovered. So there's nothing that hasn't been charted in here, but there there is still some other unexplored, or there are still some other unexplored items. So if we take this guy, which is 327 light seconds out, we'll go ahead and cruise out to him and scan him as well. Now what this does for you is this lets you uh, basically just gather extra credits as a result of you traipsing about the galaxy. Now, it's worth noting that it can put you at risk to some extent because you can be interdicted, you can be brought out of frame shift, and uh, end up with a fight for your life situation, or you know, even worse, you can get blown up in the middle of nowhere, which is pretty unfortunate. Uh, once again, your ship rebuild costs are not a substantial amount of money, but they're not cheap either. Especially as you get bigger and bigger and bigger ships. Now you notice I'm not quite up on this yet, but I am scanning it. So we'll go ahead and cruise in here and with the brakes out, we'll go ahead and we'll scan this. Alrighty, we have Bunnis A1. So now that that's scanned, I can actually go when I arrive at my destination and I can sell it off to the cartography company, which is pretty nifty. Uh, let's see, we'll go back to the galaxy map here, and I'm pretty sure there's a more elegant way to do this. Matter of fact, I'm 100% sure, I just don't know what it is yet. In this case, this is kind of the way I've always done it, which is a really bad excuse for anything. But, it'll select our, select our next one in, in our destination, and we'll go ahead and align to it, fire up the hyperdrive, and get on out of here. And I'll be right back once I get to where I'm going. Alrighty, now we're back. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out before I make this jump into Z's, down there in the lower right hand corner, uh, you will see that it says illicit cargo. Now one interesting thing to note about the rare items that you may discover you may be trading and may be running around with is the fact that not all of these items are legal in every given station out there. 
which would be kind of a bummer. Uh, that's part of the reason why it can be very necessary to just simply get going when you need to get going, as in don't spend time loitering in the systems. Uh, if you happen to be in somewhere where your cargo is illicit and that area is unknown, I would not advise scanning it, you know, unless obviously you have the money in the bank to replace whatever the cargo was and the time is not extremely important to you. Uh, this is a fairly time intensive way to go. Uh, in this case, the, you know, obviously I've jumped, what, 20, 20 some odd jumps. Uh, at one a minute, yeah, that's about 20 minutes. It's not terrible, but then again, it's not great. Now the good news is, is that with all but a couple of the rare items that I've traded in, they're not illicit in the areas that I've found to sell them in, uh, which also applies here. In this case, you notice know, it doesn't say that I have illicit cargo. And the only way for the authorities to find that is if they happen to actually scan your ship. Uh, if they do happen to scan your ship, then uh, you get slapped with a fine, which is really no big deal uh, given the amount of money that you're making that you're going to be making off the item itself. So these items do sell for quite a bit. They have a significantly higher, um, what is it, profit per ton. So in most of your regular trading, most folks consider 3,000 credits profit per ton to be a fairly reasonable way to go, to be a fairly good ratio to go after. Uh, with some of these, like specifically, I believe it's the corn, I bought that for 325 credits a ton. It'll sell for about 16,000 a ton, which is about, uh, what, 13,000 credit per ton? Or 13,000 profit per ton? Blows the doors off trading otherwise. Uh, it is worth noting, though, that the... Um, Hmm. It's, excuse me, it is worth noting that the commodities themselves are in shorter supply. They do respawn and they are resupplied in the stations periodically. Uh, however, it's going to be much, much harder for somebody with 200... Ooh, we got an interdiction. Somebody wants our cargo. Alright. I, uh, I would like to say this is not something that commonly happens. Um, it can happen from time to time. The important things when getting out of an interdiction is to make sure that your throttle ends up staying uh, staying right in the blue area as that will provide you the greatest maneuverability for your ship. Um, and it's also worth noting that if you think you can take the guy on, just go ahead and bottom your throttle out. What some other folks do is they'll build their ships specifically uh, to go extremely fast while in boost. So they'll simply drop out of an interdiction attempt and that they will boost away from the target and punch, punch back into frame shift without much of an issue. So it tends to work out fairly well for them. Uh, in my case, usually if I get pulled out, I turn around and attempt to blast the other guy. Sometimes it works out well, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, to me, it's a relatively great time. All right, so now we're at Nicola Hangar. And then we'll go ahead and fly in here and land and take a look and see how much these commodities have made us. Now, once again, I'm not carrying much in the way of tonnage at all. You know, your big guys that handle all the trading and such and have the much more expensive ships to do this. Uh, they carry a lot more cargo than my little ship can. And you know, that's fine. They put the time into the game and they've just simply bought themselves hardware that's more suited for what they enjoy doing within the universe, which is a pretty sweet way to go. Uh, in my case, my hankering is to go explore stuff and go see things that potentially nobody has seen before. I would very much like to go to Sagittarius A, which is the singularity at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, it's a trip of about 2400 light years, generally known as not for the faint of heart. You have to have quite a bit of free time to actually pull that one off. And you also, in order to make the best go of it, should have yourself a nicely outfitted ship for exploration. So we're working in that regard. Alright, we're going to 28 right over here. Go ahead and drop our gear. Throttle up to keep moving. And we'll pull in and then figure out what exactly is what. Alright, close enough. Alright. We'll go ahead and jump to the hangar here. We'll scoot the cursor out of the way. And first step is we're going to refuel. Always a good thing to do. Nothing sucks more than jumping out. You've got everything set up. You're know, settled in. You have a cup of coffee or tea, depending on which hemisphere side of this world you're from. You get out there. You make your first two jumps and discover you're out of gas. It doesn't work out well at all. All right. So first off, the Zeus Ant Grub Glue, which pretty much I love the description of this. Stick anything to everything with this natural glue. So made from made from insects. It's non-toxic. Uh, pretty much it's, I don't know, a better form of super glue. Anyhow, let's see. Let's go ahead and sell this stuff. Hmm. 
Oh, I suppose the reason that I can't sell any of it is I don't have any of it on me. It's sold here. All right, so I have five of these. Uh, you'll notice that, uh, let me go ahead and get my highlighter out here. You'll notice that I bought each one of these for 4,123 credits per item, which isn't bad at all. So I'll go ahead and sell them, but they're selling for 19,194 uh, 19, credits a piece. I have five of them, so my profit on this is 75 grand. All right, so we'll go down to the next commodity I have, which is this corn here. Go ahead and pull it up. I bought for 335. We're selling them for 14984. So there's another 30 grand on top of it. We're now sitting at 105,000 profit. I have some Levian brandy. This was bought for 3500. Sells for 18,900. Got three of them. All right. So we're sitting about a, about a 151,000. Then I have a bunch of Leasty and Evil juice. I bought for 457 a piece. Go ahead and sell all six of these. And that'll net us another, what, 87,000. So we're sitting at, what, about 230,000, give or take. There's not much risk involved. Uh, there's just more so a time investment. Now, a lot of folks would argue and say that you could do much, much, much better uh, mucking about with this. Or, excuse me, dispensing with all this trading nonsense. You're just simply running bounties, which may be your play style. It might not. In my case, it's not. This is kind of what I enjoy doing. So there's plenty of circuits you can find for the trade of raw goods you know, with all kinds of fantastic information out there on the internet. And that's where we're going to wrap up for this video. Uh, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Click the little thumbs up in the down to the right of the video. And uh, fly safe.